It's time to begin tonight. Can we stand this last night of revival? Hadn't it been good? Amen. Did you come expecting tonight? Because if you came expecting, you're going to receive of the Lord. Could we lift our hands to heaven and let's just welcome the presence of the Lord in this house. Heavenly Father, we thank you again that we can come boldly unto the throne of grace and obtain the mercy of God. I ask you, O God, that you would move in this place by your spirit. Signs, wonders, and miracles in this house as we lift high the bloodstained banner of Calvary. Move in this house tonight, sweet Holy Ghost of God. And Lord, we're going to love you for it and give you all the praise. In Jesus' name. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way for the hand of God in all my life I see. And the reason of my bliss, yes, the secret all is this, that the comforter Church, come on and look what the 
The servant of the prophet thought that he was surrounded, outnumbered. It's over. But the prophet looked up and said, Lord, open his eyes. He found out when his spiritual eyes were open, there was more with them than there was with the enemy. I'm going to tell you, a third of the angels, a third of the stars, Satan drew a third of the stars from heaven. That's a third of the angels, but we still have two-thirds of the angels with us. Amen? Amen. Lift your hands to heaven and let's thank God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world. He said, wherefore, take on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Come on, church. the name of the Lord. Amen. We fight them on our knees in this spiritual warfare. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If our ushers could come tonight to receive the evening tithe and offering. Thank you so much for your faithfulness during revival. We have had a time 
Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your prayers. God's moved greatly, and we believe that tonight is no different. We're going to see a, a move of the Spirit of God. We're going to hear the engrafted Word of God, which is able to save our souls. Amen. So, Truth Retreat, ages 13 to 18, this coming Friday and Saturday. What time are we leaving? Does anybody have ETA? Estimated arrival time to Livingston. We're leaving at 2 p.m. on Friday, so everyone that's going to Truth Retreat, you know who you are. We're leaving at 2 p.m., so be there or be left behind. Amen. Brother Craig, could you bless all?
Praise God. Woo, that's good. Thank you, musicians and singers. HTSCM Choir, come. HTSCM Choir, come. They didn't even know they were going to do this tonight, but they've been practicing. So we're going to let them sing a song tonight.
sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, HTSM. Come ahead, Brother Scott. Preacher won't even need vitamins to preach after that. This man don't need vitamins anyway. He's just pulling your leg. Well, praise the Lord. Are you glad you serve a God that will never fail? Anybody know that to be true tonight? Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Did you enjoy that choir? Amen. Give the Lord praise for that choir. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Gus, I just found out the, the history of Brother Gus. At supper tonight, dinner, whatever y'all call it over here in Texas, Amen. Mississippi, we have breakfast, lunch, and supper. Amen. Uh, these sophisticated folks have dinner and lunch and dinner, but we have lunch and supper. Hey, supper's a lot better than dinner, I can tell you. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Gus, they were telling me how that their family was not in church. Maybe some of you don't know this if you've not been a part of the church. Amen. Their family were, was not in church. Brother Pastors, uh, Pastor Matt, Pastor Gregory's mother felt led to stop one day and invite them to come to church. And they came on a Wednesday night, Rangers Missionette, and then back on Sunday morning got saved, been here ever since. Now look what he's doing for the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, well, I'll never be used for God. I didn't grow up in the preacher's home, didn't grow up in church, wasn't raised in church. I ain't got nothing to do with it. You get saved, born again, surrender your life to God, he'll use you. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. He's just looking for somebody that's willing to be used by him. Oh, joy it's been. It's, it's, 
it's gone by too fast. Can somebody say amen? There's one side of me that says it's gone by too fast. There's another side of me, that little grandbaby FaceTimed me before church tonight and said, Poppy, I said, I'll be there in just a minute, baby. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me get through preaching and get the car loaded. Amen. No, we're not going in tonight. I'm just joking. But we, we, we have enjoyed it tremendously, the fellowship with your pastor and his wife, their family, what little bit we've got to be with them. We got to spend a little time today with the School of Ministry students and and. and toured the school yesterday, the academy, and we just appreciate all that God's doing here at harvest time. I, I, I preached first in the original sanctuary, the, the small sanctuary, and, and that first year, Brother Matt said, now we're about to redo all of this, and I hear that a lot, you know, you go preach for somebody, oh, we're going to redo, blah, blah, and you go back two or three years later and ain't nothing been done. But he wasn't joking, was he? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And look at where we look at where you are today. How God is blessed. And I'm excited and I'm thankful for what God's doing at harvest time. Amen. And through you, what he's doing most of all, what he's doing for the kingdom. So it ain't about you and it ain't about your pastor. It's about the kingdom. If you lose vision of the kingdom, you've lost it all. Can somebody say amen? Wonderful place to stay. We've enjoyed it so much. Wonderful food each and every day. Enjoy the fellowship before the service tonight. Amen. Getting to visit with some of you. And we just love and appreciate you so very, very much. Amen. I need to make a public service announcement before I go any further. There's a very nice case knife with a leather sheath in the evangelist quarters. If you don't claim it before 5 o'clock in the morning, it's going to Mississippi. Fair warning right there. Amen. Very nice case knife with a leather sheath. If it don't, quit pointing him out now. I'm trying to get this thing to Mississippi. Amen. Hallelujah. You better be glad I'm saved. That's all I got to say. I'd have put that in my bag when I said a word. Amen. I'm a... My granddaddy Morris loved knives. I love knives. I've got a shoe. I've got more knives at home than one could ever use. I buy knives and just throw them in a shoe box. And I, I just I just got a shoe box full of knives. Tote the same old knife. Tote it one till I wore the blade out and then went and bought another one just like it. I don't know why I keep buying all these other ones. Amen. Hallelujah. I just love knives. Amen. We appreciate you. Turn with us to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 60. We desire your prayers. We will leave early in the morning going home. Got a lot of things that's got to be taken care of. Sunday's our homecoming there at, at Richston, and, and we're excited about that and excited about what God's doing. Amen. Not only here in Texas, but in Mississippi. We're seeing a move of God. We, we, we had the tent revival last week, as I said. We've seen six souls testify of salvation. Amen. And I thank God for that. Somebody asked me today, how's revival going? I said, we're having an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival. We had one get saved last night and two get the Holy Ghost. I preached whole weeks over the last few years and not see anybody get saved or anybody get the Holy Ghost. Church get touched. Amen. Church get blessed. Church. Amen. But I, I feel like we're coming out of that that maintaining or, or work of God that it seemed like the church had fell into for so long. And now we're entering back into that last day outpouring. Amen. He said the former rain, I poured out upon you. Amen. The former rain moderately, but in the last days, I pour out the former and the latter rain. Amen. Same time. That, that moderation means just enough to sustain you. He said, I've been giving you enough to keep you. I've been giving you enough to sustain you. I've been giving you enough to carry you you through whatever you're going through and keep you right with God but I'm going to pour out that former and that latter rain the abundance outpouring of the power the presence and the spirit of God I believe that's what's coming before the rapture and I believe we're right at the rapture of the church can somebody say you ain't in no hurry tonight are you amen because I'm not <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe we're in that, that last day outpouring of the power, the presence, the Spirit of God. Stand if you will. 
Amen. For the reading of God's word. Isaiah chapter number 60. Thank you, Pastor and his wife for having us and loving us and, and caring for us and allowing us to continue to be a part of this work that God is doing. Amen. I appreciate it. I appreciate him trusting me to stand on this platform behind this sacred desk. Me and, me and Brother Matt have so much in common from the way we feel about our family to the way we pastor. Amen. And... Um, and just, just all of that. I, I don't, I, I'm, I don't, I don't let just anybody stand behind that pulpit in Richton. I'm just being honest with you. Amen. I've got good friends that have never preached for me. Nothing against them. Good men of God, anointed men of God. God just ain't never told me to have them. Amen. And I believe your pastor's the same way. Amen. I don't think he lets me preach here because me and him's friends. I think he lets me come because he feels like the Lord said, hey, get that old Mississippi boy to come preach for you. Amen. I appreciate it. Amen. With all of my heart. Verse 1. I want, I want to preach to you tonight. I, I, I'll, I, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that I've preached this message. And I've preached it multiple times. The Lord give me what I'm about to preach to you tonight back at the beginning of this year. He dealt with me for a couple of weeks. I preached it, tried to preach it on a Sunday night there at our home church. I made such a mess out of it that I came back a week later and preached it again. <laughs> I did. It was probably the first time I've ever done that in my ministry. But that I knew what God wanted to say. I knew that there was a message. I knew there was something that needed to be said. But I felt like I didn't get it delivered that first time the way God wanted me to deliver it. And that week, he continued to deal with me. And I came back and we preached it again. And I felt the Holy Ghost speak to me. And I felt him say to me, Son, every revival you preach this year, you'll close with this message. It doesn't mean that I haven't sought God for this service tonight and just come in here, well, this is the one. But I believe this is something that the church needs and that we need to hear. I believe this is something that you will grasp and you will get a hold of because this church has the vision that I want to share with you tonight. Amen. Scripture says, amen, without a vision, the people perish without a dream, without a plan, without a purpose, you perish. Harvest time's got a vision. Amen? you got a vision. You can see that. I can understand that. Please don't take what I'm about to say wrong. There's nothing wrong with your vision. It's a wonderful vision. I appreciate the vision. But I believe God wants to instruct us tonight, His church, how to carry out this vision just a little bit better. Can somebody say amen? amen? Nothing, I'm not saying, listen, I'm not, maybe I shouldn't have said it that way, Brother Matt. I don't, I don't mean anything by that this church is not in the right direction. But I believe God is talking to his church this year through this message. Amen? His church, the church. The called church. Listen to what he said. Isaiah chapter number 60, verse number one. He says, Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Did you hear what he said? Verse 2. Darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness the people. But, don't you love the buts of the Bible? <laughs> Amen. Don't you love that one little three-letter word that says, hold on a minute, there's more to this. Amen. That's not all they are to this. That's not the end. That's not the final. That's not... Amen. The end of the story. But, he says, but, amen, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. <laughs> come on, somebody. 
Amen. And the Gentile. Oh, hallelujah. You want, just, you want me to just read the text and you get it and we just shout a while. It's all right with me. No matter to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to me. He said, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Listen to verse number four. Lift up thine eyes round about thee and see. And gather themselves and, and, and see all they gather themselves together. They come, listen, they come to thee. They come to thee. Who comes to thee? They come to thee, thy sons from far and thy daughters to be nursed at thy side. That sounds like revival, don't it? Amen. Hallelujah. They come to thee. Thy sons, amen, shall come from far. Thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Slip your hands up this way and ask God if he's ever anointed a preacher that he anoint me tonight. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you, God, for your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for all that you are and do for us. Thank you, God, for the many ways that you touch us, for the many ways you bless us, for the way you've anointed us, God, every night in this service, in this revival. I'm praying, God, for that anointing to come again tonight. Use us now, God, in a mighty way. Touch hearts, touch lives. Speak to us, God. Speak to us by your power. Speak to us by your presence. Speak to us by your anointing. Let the Holy Ghost of heaven rest heavily upon us. Father, we love you, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, we magnify you in this house. Come on, church, give him praise. Give him glory. Come on, hallelujah. Give him praise and give him glory in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the sweet presence of the Lord. In my office at home, there are two books on, or used to be two books on the shelves in my office. My office flooded a few weeks ago, and it's a mess. <laughs> Amen. Most of my books are in boxes right now, but we're working on getting that fixed. Amen. But in my office, there were two books on the shelves. They're in boxes now. Amen. At the time, both of these books was best-selling books. Amen. One of these, or one of those books uh, was written in 1986. The other one was written in 1988. Both of these books are fictional Christian novels that were written, amen, by a well-known author of that time by the name of Frank E. Peretti. Anybody remember that name, that Christian author? Anybody read any of his stuff? Am I the only one? Amen. Has it been that long ago? I know 80, 86. How many was it born in 86? Raise your hand. Amen. How many of you didn't even exist in 86? Amen. You are still in the record books of heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. It wasn't him on this earth. Frank Peretti, amen, a well-known author of that time, a Christian author. He wrote the first book in 1986 that was called This Present Darkness. Amen. The sequel to that book that was written in 1988 was called Piercing uh, the Darkness. Both of these books are based on, amen, fictional books, of course, as we've already said, uh, but they were based on the spiritual warfare that we are in uh, as Christians. Uh, amen. Referencing what the Bible said, Paul said to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, amen, when he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Amen. Both of these books paint a, a vivid picture, a man, a portrait uh, of the motives and the actions of spiritual beings, uh, both demonic and uh, angelic, uh, revealing unto us in these books a man's, you know, imagination. I'm sure as many times as my father has preached out here and amen in the uh, uh, the pastors, ministers, restorations and the youth conferences, I'm sure you've heard him say, I've heard him say it for years, God didn't give me an imagination for me not to be able to use it while I'm a preaching, amen, hallelujah. If he hadn't wanted me to use my imagination, he wouldn't give it to me. That's, that's a line made popular by my father. I guess he's the only one I ever heard say it and I use it quite 
quite often. But Frank Peretti in his imagination, he wrote of this and revealing the power of prayer in this warfare. Amen. One of them was based around a small town that was in attack. Amen. By the demonic powers of hell. And as long as the church and the Christian and the child of God was praying, amen, angels were standing with flaming swords, amen, warding off the attack of the enemy on that, amen, town and on that church and on the people of that church. You know what this world needs tonight more than it needs anything else in the world? It needs some mamas and grandmamas and daddies and grandpas that know how to pray again. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Can I take my time tonight? Amen. Just take my time. Amen. The, the doors are not locked. Hey, amen. If you get through before I do, God bless you. Be back Sunday morning, Brother Matt. Have a good message for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Listen to me tonight. Amen. We need. This is what's lacking. This is the reason uh, that the enemy is just having his way, havoc uh, in our homes, in our churches, in our schools, in our children, uh, and in our families. Uh, people no longer pray uh, the way they used to pray. Can somebody say amen? I said people no longer pray uh, the way they once prayed. Uh, some of my most vivid memories of both uh, amen of my granddaddies my granddaddy Mars who was a pastor. Amen. My granddaddy Roni, my mother's father uh, who was also a minister and a pastor. Amen. Of the, uh, a minister of this gospel. Uh, some of my most vivid memories of them is their prayer life. Uh, amen. My granddaddy Mars pastored in Douglas, Georgia. Amen. When we we were children and we would go out and spend two weeks with them in the summer, us boys. And their, their, their bedroom was on one end, one end of the house and there were two guest bedrooms on the other end of the house. And one of those guest bedrooms was my granddaddy's prayer room. And we slept in the other. Never was there a day that we were there that the sun came up that my granddaddy was not in that bedroom praying. And so Somebody say amen. He used to say any preacher let the sun beat him out of the bed ain't worth the salt in his body. <laughs> amen. That's what he said. Amen. And he meant it. Amen. 430, he's up praying. He's up seeking God. He's done at his time with God uh, before that sun ever got up, before it ever come up. My granddaddy Roney. Amen. Amen. He, I, I don't know that he prayed that early. He, he worked and held a job and was by vocation most of his years uh, of pastoring but when he lived in that little white house that he still lives in now uh, amen I can remember it as well uh, as it was yesterday uh, I'm just a lad of a boy uh, amen and every evening uh, after supper uh, we go out the back door across the screen porch uh, we go out that old screen door wham uh, slam behind you anybody remember them on the houses uh, amen we go down by the chicken pen, uh, amen, and past the chicken pen by the old barn, uh, and out behind the barn would go down, there's a little branch of water, uh, and I always liked it because you had to jump from root to root to get across the branch uh, to keep from getting your feet wet, uh, and then you'd go up that little hill on the other side of the branch uh, in that pine plantation, uh, and there by one of those big old pine trees was an altar. Uh, come on somebody, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Hallelujah. And that pine straw be that deep on the ground except right there where that altar was and it was flat. I'd sit down over there against one of them pine trees. My granddaddy's knelt down at that altar with his back to me. Amen. He'd start praying and seeking God. I'd watch him. Brother Mullins, I'd be watching him because he had this. I don't know where it come from. I don't know why he done it. But you knew when he was feeling God cause that old right shoulder would do this come on somebody hallelujah every time he'd pray and the Holy Ghost come on he's about to have a Holy Ghost come on now hallelujah and he'd get to preaching and you'd know when the Holy Ghost 
got on him. That old right shoulder begin to roll. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I remember those days. Come on. I said, I remember those days. God, give us Holy Ghost feel. Men, women of God that know how to pray again. Can somebody say amen? Woo! Put me a countdown on that TV so I'll know how long I preach so I'll quit when I need to. Amen. Hallelujah, because I got a feeling. It, I'm just going to quit tonight. Amen. Hallelujah, because we ain't even got to the message yet. Listen to me. Amen. Listen. Amen. This power of prayer. There's power. I, I got to tell this story, and I'm going to move on. Amen. I'm going to get into this, and I'm going to preach to us tonight, and God's going to help us. Amen. This power of prayer. Amen. That my, my granddaddy Rony, I remember it like it was yesterday. My grandmother had to have some places took off of her hand. Amen. And they said it's more than likely going to be cancer. Amen. The aggressive skin cancer. Amen. And they took those pieces off of her hand. And they said, we'll call you. This has been years ago. We'll call you in a few days. We'll let you know. Amen. What you know, we'll do the bombs, do the test, and we'll see if it's cancer or not. Amen. The next day or the day after, I don't remember, one or two days later, the phone rung at the house. My mom answered the phone. It's my granddaddy on the other end. She said, Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Really? The, the doctor called today. No, honey. The doctor didn't call. Come on, somebody. He called mama and on the other end of the phone, he's telling mama. You can quit worrying about it. You can quit worrying about it. Your mom ain't got cancer. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. She said the doctor called. They done got the pathologist test back, and they found out that it's not. No, he said, ain't no doctor called. I just come back from my prayer meeting, and the Holy Ghost said, ain't no cancer in your mama's body. Everything's going to be all right, and there ain't nothing to worry about. You know what? When the doctor's office called about four or five days later. You know what they said? Ain't no cancer in that. We don't know how we missed it. I know how they missed it. As a praying man in a, come on, in a pine orchard, praying down the power of the Holy Ghost. You want to take control of your family. You want to take control of your home. You want to take control of your children. You find your prayer closet, honey, and get back a hold of God, God moves for those that are seek his face. Whoa, glory. Woo. I might as well preach this my last night. Hallelujah. Amen. I just don't understand why God don't ever answer my prayers. Did you see where so-and-so went to the bathroom today on Facebook? <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo. I just don't understand why I can't seem to get victory. Did you see where, oh, brother, so-and-so, amen. Hallelujah. You put that thing down, clear you out of prayer closet. <laughs> oh, come on, son. Man, this ain't even my message, but it's so good I can't go on without preaching here just a minute. <laughs> Amen. Come on. We're, th- we're in one of the worst battles uh, of my family's life uh, some months ago, maybe even a year ago now. I don't know. Amen. It, 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 it just uh, the enemy was attacking uh, my mind, my family, my home. Uh, Amen. Finally, one night, uh, I just said, I've had enough. Uh, I told my wife. I said, I've had enough of this mess. Amen. I'm not putting up with it no more. Amen. You go on to bed. She said, "When you, I said, I don't know that I'm coming to bed tonight. Can somebody say amen? And I took that old pillow and I went up there and I got in the living room floor and I laid down right in the middle of the living room and I said, God, I ain't getting up from here until that devil's defeated. Can somebody say amen? I ain't getting up from this living room floor until that devil's defeated. Come on. 
It didn't happen in five minutes. It didn't happen in 10 minutes. It was way over in the morning before I ever went to bed. But I want to tell you something, honey. When I went to bed that morning, the devil knew who was in charge. The devil knew who was in control. The devil knew it's time to take a back seat. That man... Hey, 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 hey. Woo. You know why the devil's robbing you of your prayer time? Because he knows it works. Come on. Hallelujah. He knows it works. He knows it works. Prayer is the most vital weapon the child of God has. Amen. We see that, we understand that, and we know that. It's from the two titles of these books, this present darkness and this piercing the darkness that God spoke to my heart to preach to the church this year. Every door that was open, every revival that he allowed for me to be able to go into and to preach on this subject, piercing the present darkness. Piercing the present darkness. When we speak of darkness and we talk of darkness, there's three things in the Word of God that darkness represents. Amen. We, 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 we'll we move through this quickly because I've already took too much time. Amen. In my, in my, in my opening there. Amen. Hallelujah. There's three things that we we look at and we see. Now, Brother Matt, what me and you talked about at lunch today about them time limits, that don't apply to revival, right? Amen. And he didn't put no time limit on me. We was talking about pastoring, and you, you understand what I'm saying. I, I don't want nobody to go out here and say, oh, Brother Matt was telling the preacher. No, that ain't what it was. We was just talking about pastoring, and you know how. Anyway, you wouldn't understand. Amen. If you ain't ever pastoring. Hallelujah. But it was just friendly. Nothing, nothing. Well, anyway. Hallelujah. Just, just forget I ever said that, all right? Just take that off the book. Amen. Hallelujah. No, I just basically said on Wednesday nights when I'm at home, I try to be cordial to my people because they worked all day and they got to get up the next morning. Amen. And I try not to keep them all night unless the Lord gets to moving. Well, the Lord's moving tonight. So, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's three things that darkness represents in the Word of God. First and foremost, when you read the word darkness in the Scripture, we understand in places that we read about it that it's speaking specifically of physical darkness. Amen. The darkness that's in the night out there, the nighttime, the darkness that takes over a building or a room or a place when the lights are cut off and when the the light is taken away from that area. Amen. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 said, The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. This is speaking of, of that place of the absence of light where darkness is. You do understand that, right? Amen. There is no such thing as turning on and off darkness. Amen. You can't turn on darkness in here. For darkness to come into this building, you have to turn off the light. (laughs) Amen. I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Amen. That's way on over on page five. We're still on page one. Amen. (laughs) To to get. Now, you young preachers, don't don't pattern yourself after me. You'll get in trouble. Amen. Hallelujah. You have to be old, gray, and bald-headed to get away with some of the things I've said this week. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Amen. You turn that light off, darkness comes in. Second thing we find in the scripture that darkness references, amen, is is a mental condition that people find themselves in. When they come to a state of depression in their lives, amen, and and, and the enemy has come and their emotions are filled with fear and despair. They find themselves in a place of mental darkness. They're they're in depression. They don't want to live. They don't want to get out of the bed. They don't want to go about their daily routine. They don't want to take care of business and do things that needs to be done. And I'll tell you in this house tonight, if you're there mentally in a darkness, in a depression, and the enemy's robbing your life from you through depression and a mental darkness, there's 
power over that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I feel like talking to somebody right here. He said he came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. It ain't God's will that you just get up and breathe and go back to bed. He wants you to enjoy life. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your home. Enjoy your spouse. Enjoy your children. Enjoy your grandchildren. Get victory before you get out of here tonight. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Man, I got to quit taking these side roads. We ain't never going to get done. Amen. Thirdly, when we find the word darkness in the word of God, it's representing a spiritual condition. Amen. It's referencing the condition of a, of a, of, of a people. Amen. That, that have allowed themselves, amen, to get in a spiritual place that they ought not be in. That darkness is represented, rep, represents spiritually the condition, the spiritual condition of a society who has turned their back on God. Amen? The spiritual condition of a society who has turned their back on God. This is what I want to focus on for just a few minutes tonight if God would be my help. The spiritual aspect of darkness in the society that we're living in today. Can we bring those verses back up? Is that, is that, would that be a problem? Amen. Bring up, if you will, Isaiah chapter 60 in verse number 2 for me again. Is this all right? It's a little different my normal style of preaching. I want you to see what Isaiah says here. He says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. Amen. I feel that God spoke to my heart concerning this verse that Isaiah is declaring unto us two different distinct things that would take place in the land. Two distinct uh, different things uh, that would take place uh, in the land. First of all, he says, darkness shall cover the earth. Amen. Darkness shall uh, cover the earth. That's the first thing. The second thing that he tells us uh, is gross darkness uh, shall cover uh, the people. Uh, what he is saying to us here as God spoke to my heart and to my life uh, is when we allow darkness uh, to cover the earth spiritually, uh, then we can expect nothing less uh, than for people to begin to live uh, in gross darkness. Uh, can somebody say amen? Uh, I said we can expect nothing less uh, than for people to begin to live lives of gross darkness. This is what we are witnessing in our society today. We live in a world that is covered with darkness and this world of darkness that we're living in has produced a generation of people of gross darkness. Come on now. I said it has produced a generation of people of gross darkness. People who commit disgusting, offensive, unacceptable, rude, vulgar sins, no longer in privacy, but in the open. Can somebody say amen? Listen to me tonight, church. When you take God, his word, his commandments out of a society, when you take it out of our schools, come on, when you take it out of our government, when you take it out of our businesses, when you tell God that he's not welcome any longer, this is what has produced the society that we are dealing with today in this land. Can somebody say amen? Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you take the word of God out, when God is no longer welcome, the presence of God, the power of God, the spirit of God, it produces what we have 
in our society today. This is what happened. Amen. In the time of the judges, in Judges chapter 2, the Bible said that Joshua, the servant of the Lord, be 110 years old. Amen. Died. They buried him in the border of his inheritance. Also, all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. There arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. How quickly a society can go from being a God-fearing. Come on. From a society that knows God, serves God, trusts God, lives for God, to a society that we live in today that knows not the Lord. Can somebody say amen? Come on, you're going to help me tonight. I said you're going to help me tonight. Brother and sister, we are witnessing this in the land that we're living in today. We see a generation of people that knows nothing about God, how good God is, how great God is, how powerful God is. They want nothing to do with him, and they're living in gross darkness. Can somebody say amen? One generation, one generation without God. One generation of people, amen, dying, passing on, produced another generation. The scripture says that knew not the Lord. This led them to serving other gods, the gods of Baal, the God of Ashtoreth. Baal and Ashtoreth in the simplest form means many gods. The Israelites gave up the one true God for many gods. This is where we are in America today. Not you, not I. I'm not preaching to us tonight. I'm just trying to persuade you and show you where we are as a nation and how we got there. Can somebody say amen? Paul said, writing to Timothy, the last days shall be perilous times because men shall become lovers of pleasure, lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Amen. Everything has become a God in the society that we live in today except for God. I get so frustrated, agitated, aggravated. Uh, my righteous indignation gets stirred up uh, when I turn a television on on Saturdays uh, and there's some college football stadium uh, with 30, 40, 50,000 people uh, packed in that stadium uh, and they're all on their feet uh, and they're all hollering and they're all cheering. Uh, amen. One stadium, and I was reading about a few weeks ago, don't remember where it's at. Amen. But it's one of the college stadiums. Amen. When when the first opening home game, when the home team comes in, they play some song. Everybody in the stadium starts jumping up and down. And there's so many people jumping up and down until it almost causes an earthquake in that area from the excitement of the people over their God. I'm not against college football. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm against some college football teams, but we won't go there. I'm not against college football, but what I am against is they'll sit through the cold, through the rain, through the snow. Come on, somebody. Through the heat. They'll jump. They'll dance. They'll holler for their God. But when we come to church, we want to sit out because our God... Come on, somebody. Hey! Hallelujah! I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Come on, somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Somebody let God know that he's still your God. Somebody let God know that you still love him. You'll still worship him. You'll still magnify him. You'll still adore his name. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 
Come on. You let it even cloud up on Wednesday night. Oh, I better stay home. It may rain. <laughs> oh, really? Then don't you go to your grandchild's ball game tomorrow night in the rain. It's not just ball. It's boats. It's cars. It's trucks. It's land. It's houses. Anything can become a God. I, I don't know why. I don't know how. I, I, I say not much about it. <laughs> but man, I'm sorry. I ain't never going to get through. <laughs> I don't even know. I married that little girl right there back in 1990. We were sweethearts, school, high school sweethearts. Amen. We started liking each other. We couldn't date, of course. We was too young. Went all throughout our high school years dating. I asked her daddy, I said, can, can, I, have, can I have Kim? Can I ask her to marry me? You know, that's, 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 that's a respectable thing to do, guys. You want your father-in-law to respect you? You take time to go to him before you ask her and say, could I have your daughter as my wife? You'll start off on the right foot, make things a lot better. That's free. Amen? And that gives him a chance to straighten you up. My son-in-law come to me and I'm sorry, this is, I can't, bro, man. I won't never get through. I won't never get through if I keep doing this. I'm honest. I got six pages of note. I'm on page two. My son-in-law came. He's probably watching. He'll kill me. Amen. I, I, and, and I was going to tell about this. And I'll get back there in just a minute. We're standing on a stump on the 40 acres that God had blessed us with. And that's where I was going to go. And I'll get back to that in just a second. He said, uh, 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 Brother Scott, I'd like to ask Reagan to marry me. And I said, okay, that's fine. You know, and that gave me a chance to tell him what I'd do to him <laughs> if he ever heard her. I said, I don't mind preaching for in prison. <laughs> See, you, your father-in-law needs that chance to tell you that. <laughs> amen, he said, amen, amen, he said, amen, 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 amen. I asked her to marry me on the porch of her mom and daddy's house. You know, back then, we didn't do it like you do now. We didn't spend, you know, it just... Amen. I'm waiting on her when she come in from work that night, and I'm sitting out on the swing. She come in, she sat down beside me, and we talked for a few minutes. And I said, I want to ask you something. I said, will you marry me? And I got that ring out of my pocket, and I said, hold on a minute. See, this is, this is, this is the stupidest thing in the world. No, I'm serious. I'm not being funny. This is the stupidest thing in the world. I said, before you say yes, you know that God has called me to preach. And when I keep quit running, I'm going to have to be a preacher. Because <laughs> he started dealing with me when I was 15, and I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do this. I wanted to do anything but this. I wanted the big house, the farmhouse. I wanted the ranch. I wanted the horses, the cows. I wanted to build houses like my granddaddy had taught me to build houses. I wanted to have a place. But on that Sunday night, amen, in 1991, because we got married in 90, laying under that pew in that church when God said, I want you to preach my gospel, I give all of that up. I give every bit of it up. Every bit of it. I laid it all for God. And I said, you can have the house. It wouldn't be yet. Yeah, uh, you can have all of my plans. You can have all of that. I'm, I'll go preach your gospel. But I want to tell you something, young people. It's worth obeying God. Because standing before you tonight is a 52-year-old man. I can't explain how. I don't have any idea how to explain it. But I own 40 acres of land with a ranch house on it. Fenced with cows eating grass while we talking. Huh? Did he not say he'd give you the desires of your heart? 
Amen. It don't work out on paper, Brother Matt. I shouldn't be able to afford what I have, but God bless and he touched and he moved. And every time I pull in that driveway, I don't look at it and say how proud I am. I look at it and I say, Lord, I thank you for my blessing. Can somebody say amen? Lord, I thank you for my blessing. Amen. But I'm standing on that property after God give it to us. Or he, he, we're paying for it every month. He's giving it to me one month at a time. Amen. Hallelujah. I said he's giving it to me one month at a time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm standing on that property on a Saturday evening when I should be in that office getting ready to preach Sunday morning. Amen. But I've become consumed by my gift that God, I'm preaching on God's in your life. I've become consumed about my gift that God has given me. When God spoke to me standing down there by that little old pond and he said, son, I give this to you. I said, yes, sir, you did. And he said, I can take it away from you just as quick as I give it to you if you let it get in my place. Come on, somebody. I said, well, I better go get ready to preach in the morning. Come on now. Hallelujah. Amen. Anything can be a God. I said, anything can be a God. And when they turn from the true God to many gods, come on. Oh, I got to preach, brother. I got to preach. I got to preach. I feel something arising up on the inside of me. And you can go back and watch every time I've ever preached it on YouTube or Facebook and none of them's ever the same. Don't you ever think, Brother Scott, come in here with a transcript and preach the same message. It's the same thought, but it's a different message. But I'm going to tell you something. When Daddy became more consumed with the Little League team than he did the Sunday school team and the church and the youth team and the youth camp and come on, and ball's more important now than going to church on Sunday and you wonder why your youngin grew up to be a heathen and won't have nothing to do with God anymore. You gotta teach that child God's number one. Come on, somebody. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a world out there that's living in gross darkness. Are you listening to me tonight? I'm not against them. I'm for them. I'm just preaching. I said, I'm just preaching. I'm just preaching. Brother and sister, you go to Tyler, you'll see any and everything that you could ever want to see. Today, today, just today. I ain't been hardly anywhere today. Amen. We got up early. We went to the gym. We worked out for a little while. Then we came back. I came to the church. We went to lunch. We went from lunch to Dick's Sporting Goods, Party Place, and Marshall's. I had to go to Marshall's. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. And the things that I saw in Tyler, Texas today. Come on now. Let me look. Amen. I don't want to get in trouble here. And I'm not against. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you why. You stay with me. Don't you walk out on me because you'll walk out mad. Amen. With a misconception of what I'm preaching tonight. I've seen purple hair. I've seen pink hair. Come on, somebody. I've seen hair every way you can do hair. I've seen rings where there are not be rings. Come on now. Hallelujah. I've seen a young lady in Marshalls this evening. My wife said, Go. They usually got nice shoes. Go look at the shoes. I went over there. I turned around, walked away. My wife said, you find some shoes? I said, no. I couldn't shop for no shoes because there's a young lady over there. Amen. And you can see more than you should ever be allowed to see in public. Come on now. Amen. I'm telling you, a T-shirt on, like you see these men wear. You know what I'm talking about? These T-shirts cut out like this on the sides. You know what I'm talking about? That's what she had on and nothing under it. I walked around there. She bent over. I said, uh-oh. Hallelujah. Not today, devil. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. 
It's gross darkness. It's gross darkness. Listen, when homosexuality has become in instead of a sin, it is gross darkness. When our government tells our children you can be what you choose to be. If you want to be a boy, be a boy. If you want to be a girl, be a girl. Come on. Oh, you done quit on me right there. You sit down on me right there. And here's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Somebody in our government said, if children want to be a Skittle, then let them be a Skittle. You ain't no Skittle, honey. Come on. You are fearfully and wonderfully made by God Almighty. And he made no mistake. Hey! Come on! Hallelujah! 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 Isaiah said they'll call good, amen, evil good, good evil. Darkness, light, light, darkness, bitter for the sweet and sweet for the bitter. Have you ever seen a time like we're living in today? I'm not against them, I'm for them. Can somebody say amen? I said I'm not against them, I'm for them. This is what I come to tell you tonight. It ain't their fault. Can somebody say amen? I said it ain't their fault. The church let them down. The church world let them down. Come on, somebody. We quit preaching. We quit teaching. We quit praying. We quit fasting. And when they couldn't find what they wanted at the church, they went to the world. And it come on. And there's nothing in that world that can satisfy the empty soul of a man or a woman. What that world needs in gross darkness is a fresh outpouring of the power of the Holy Ghost. Hey, 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 come on, come on. She walks through the door as a known husband of this city. If she's looking for Jesus, you show her Jesus. Don't you turn her away. You let her know there is a hope, there is a help, there is an answer, and his name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You with me? You with me? Am I okay? Pastor, you want to come stand beside me so you can pat me on the back if I go too far? I'm serious. I'll cut it off at any time. This is not their fault. This is not their fault. Now, they some good. Me and my wife had the best experience today at Dick's Sporting Good. Amen? There's a little young lady in there in the shoe department. I'm serious. She went above and beyond. She was knowledgeable. She knew all about them tennis shoes. I told her what I wanted. She brought me out five different pair of tennis shoes. This is what people that does what you're wanting to do come and buy. I tried them on. I didn't like them. She went and got me another one. She never lost her smile. And when I got ready to leave, I said, could I see your manager? She said, sir. I said, could I see your manager? She said, yes, sir, just one minute. Her manager come to where I was. And I said, I want to tell you something. You got one of the finest young women living in America today working in this shoe department, and you better take care of her. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I said, I travel. I go in stores all across America where they act like they don't want to help you. And if you ask them for help, it acts like it makes them mad. And I want to reach across the counter and grab them by the nap of the neck and say, if I don't spend my money here, you ain't getting no payday. You better help me. <laughs> but there's a, there's a generation out there that's going to hell. And it ain't their fault. We allowed it. The church allowed it. The Christian allowed it. We let them take prayer out of school. We let them take the Ten Commandments off the courthouse wall. We gradually watched as they took God out of our society. Can't pray at ball games no more. Come on. Can't have Bible studies at school. Can't do this. Can't do that. Can't do this. Can't. What else do you expect? 
You take any one of these young ladies right here and put them in a room in this building, turn the lights off, shut the door, and keep them in that darkness, and don't let them see no light. It won't be just a matter of time until they will lose their mind, and they will be just as crazy as anything that's ever walked the face of the earth because it takes light to keep your sanity. Huh? Come on now. Why do we expect any less out there spiritually? We cut the lights off, not us, but we allow them to cut the lights off spiritually in our world and look at what we have. It's not their fault. Can somebody say amen? What are you saying, Bridget? I'm saying the next time you go out to eat and that person walks up to you to wait on you, amen, and he's got a little more sugar in his tank than he ought to have. <laughs> Come on. I don't know other, no other way to put it. <laughs> amen. I mean, that's just the way we'd say it in Mississippi. Amen. Hallelujah. He ain't as manly as he ought to be. Come on. Instead of when he walks off, you looking across the table at your spouse and saying, well, I guess that's just another one. Amen. You look across your table, that table at your spouse and say, that is the product of the gross darkness that's in our land. And he's going to go to hell if we don't turn the lights back on. Can somebody say amen? He's going to go to hell if we don't show him the way, if we don't turn the light on. Come on. Are you with me? Are you with me? me. I said, are you with me tonight? Hallelujah. Are you with me tonight? Listen to me. Amen. The generation that's living in gross darkness. Amen. Not their fault. They are a product of the society that we are living in. So what do we do about it, preacher? We must arise, as Isaiah said, and we must shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Come on, somebody. You got to open your arms. You got to open your heart. You got to open your doors. You got to open your church. You got to let them know there is a God that loves you. There is a God that cares about you. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm making a mess out of this. Amen. I done hit so many side trails that I'm making a mess out of it. But you hear me tonight. Amen. They don't understand love. They don't understand what love is. They don't understand how to love or how to be loved. They come out of broken homes, broken families. Mama done her own thing. Daddy done his own thing. And they were left to do the best that they can. They know the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But they don't understand love. Come on, somebody. I said they don't understand love. How will they ever understand love? The church has to rise up and show them the love of Jesus Christ in our hearts and in our lives. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. How do we pierce the darkness? How do we pierce the gross darkness? How do we make a difference? Listen to me. John's gospel. Amen. Listen to what John says. In John's gospel, he said this. That first chapter in the 14th verse, he said the word was made flesh. Can we pull that up? Amen. John chapter 1 verse 14. Amen. Give me, give me, give me. I don't know. Just let me get through. <laughs> Read it for yourself. And the Word was made flesh, dwelt among us. Hallelujah. No, no, I went too far. Go back. Go back to verse 1. I went too far. Go back to verse 1. Amen. Let me, let me find where I'm at. In the beginning was the Word. I want you to listen. I want you to see this. God showed me this so real beginning this year, okay? This is what God revealed to me. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. You know who that Word was, right? It's Jesus. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse number 2. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse number 3. All things were made by Him. Without Him, nothing was made. That was made. Amen. One of those verses says, In Him was life. I didn't put it in my, in my notes. If you see that, go to that one. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. Next verse said, But the light shined in darkness. But the darkness couldn't comprehend it. And I feel devil. The word had been here from the beginning. But men was not accepting the word. The word, the light, the word shined in darkness. But the darkness couldn't comprehend the word. They didn't understand it. They wasn't brought up in Sunday school. They didn't go to children's church. They don't know about the miracles, the power, the provision, and the things of God. They were unable to comprehend the word until verse 14. Watch this. Verse 14. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, full of truth. The world could not comprehend the Word, the truth, the light, until the light became flesh and dwelt among them. And they said, that's what I need. I'm not against preaching. I am a preacher. I'm not against revivals. We're in revival and I love revivals. I'm not against teaching. I'm not against Sunday school. I'm not against small group classes or whatever you want to call them. But there's a world out there that knows nothing about God. And they can't comprehend who God is, what God does, or how God works. And the only way that you're going to pierce the darkness that they're in is that word must become flesh in you and you become the vessel of God, the hands and the feet of God to them. And Brother Matt, you go into that darkness and you physically pull them out. (laughs) You ain't going to preach them out. You ain't going to teach them out. Come on, sit back down, Brother Matt. Hallelujah, you ain't going to persuade them that this is the right way, but you can love them in. You can pull them in. You can show them. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on. I'm telling you, don't look down your nose at them. Love them. Come on. Come on, Brother Matt. You understand what I'm saying. Don't agree with them. Come on now. Don't have pity on them. Don't let them feel like that you agree with their lifestyle. Let them know I don't agree with what you're doing, but I love you. I love you. I want to help you. I want to pull you in. I want to make a difference in your heart and in your life. Isaiah chapter 16 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 16 verse 1. He said arise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. How we going to pierce this present darkness. You're going to pierce it. You're going to pierce it. You're going to pierce it. You'll be the light that shines in the darkness that shows them the love of Jesus Christ. Come on, musicians. Amen. I'm not going to pierce it from this pulpit. Maybe. 
I almost asked tonight before I started preaching. God help me. I made a mess out of this tonight. I, I, I hit too many side trails. And I've cut it too short. But I almost asked tonight. And this is the craziest question that a preacher could ever ask. Before I started preaching. How many people in the house tonight is not saved? So let's just do it. Is there anybody in the house tonight that's not saved and you're willing to raise your hand and say, Preacher, I'm lost. I'm undone. I'm without God. You're not saved. Anybody? Sis, do you want to be saved? Come on, right now. Come on, Brother Matt. Come on, Sister Tori. Come on, Brother Matt. Leader. Brother Matt, pastor, right there. Right there. He's going to help you find the Lord. Anybody else in the house tonight not saved? You want to get saved? Come on, right now. Just slip your hand up and say, Preacher, I'm not saved. Anybody? <laughs> Boy, this is amazing, ain't it? <laughs> he said his truth, his word would not return void. See, now that's proof right there that you can preach the word and people will get saved. And if there's people in this house tonight that's not saved, my preaching can reach them, not who I am, but the Holy Ghost through me, me being a servant, a vessel, can reach them. Anybody else not saved, want to get saved? Come on. You're not up here by yourself. This young lady's getting saved. She's getting born again right now. She came in lost. She's going home saved. Child of God. Come on. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? I can't, I can't move on yet. Hey, somebody else. There's, there's a young man and young lady in this building right here. You came to church tonight because somebody invited you. You didn't want to come. You fought and fought against it. Oh, but you finally give in and said, you know, just to make them happy, we'll go to church. Amen. But now that you got here, you realize, hey, I need to get saved. I need to get born again. That preacher does love me. He don't hate me. He ain't against me. He don't agree with my lifestyle, but he loves me. Come on right now. Come on right now. Come on right now. You want to get saved? <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Right here. I mean, amen. Come on, come on. Somebody, anybody. Another one of you ladies. Come. Another one of you. I don't want a lot yet. Just one or two. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? This is your spot, sir. Ma'am. Young man, young woman. You wandered in this building tonight and you're not saved. Come on, get saved right now. Before we go any further. Come on, get saved right now. All right, listen to me while these are praying, making things right with God. My preaching in this building tonight is not going to win that young lady or those people that I've seen in town today. And I'm not judging them, but the Bible said you'll know a tree by the fruit that it bears. My preaching in this building tonight is not going to win them. You know what's going to win them? You. And you and you and you and you and you when you start letting the light huh the world could not comprehend what they needed from God until Jesus became flesh and dwelt among them we got to get out among them again 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 we got to show them we got to prove to them Isaiah said arise let your light shine Arise, let your light shine. Listen to what he said in verse 2. Amen. He said, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. His glory shall be seen upon thee. The Gentiles shall come. That word Gentiles in the scripture means the sinner, the world, the lost, the undone. When you begin to let your light shine in this world, it will draw all men. It's a promise. I said it's a promise of the word of God. The Gentiles will come. The Gentiles will come. Oh, but this is a promise to you mamas. And this is a promise to you daddies uh, that's got lost children. Uh, he said, if you let your light shine, uh, he'll bring your sons uh, and your daughters home. He'll bring your sons and your daughters home. Oh, you ain't helping me right here. I said, you ain't helping me right here. God promised uh, if we would be the light, uh, he would bring uh, our sons and daughters home. Get around this front, lift your hands and say, God, make me a light. Make me a light. 
Make me a light. Come on, all over the building. Make me light, God. I want to shine. I want to shine. Oh, you satisfy the longing inside. And I need you. Oh, I need you. There is nothing, no place, no one else will do. I need you. I need you. Oh, you satisfy. Come on, make me a light. I want to be a light that can pierce the darkness. I want to be a light. The darkness. I want to pierce the darkness of some heart. I want to pierce the darkness of some life. I want to pierce the darkness of some individual. I want to make a difference in somebody's life. I want to be the one that makes a difference in somebody's life. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let my light shine. Let my light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. My soul longs and even fades for you. Oh, oh, my heart and my flesh, it cries out for.
everybody in the house. Everybody in the house, stretch your hands this way. Just stretch your hands this way. Plead the blood of Jesus right now. God's fixing to work a divine deliverance. You're fixing to witness a divine deliverance from God in this house tonight. Come on, stretch your hands this way and start saying, Jesus, Jesus, come on. I plead the blood. I plead. Come about one mind and one accord. One mind and one accord. I plead. I plead the blood. Take hands with somebody. Join hands with somebody. Make a point of contact. Plead the blood. I plead the blood. Deliverance. Deliverance.
somebody here needs an answer to the questions, the fears, and the whys. Somebody here is desperate for freedom from the past, the chains, and the lies. You feel like you've wasted so much time. Wanna move ahead, but you're still lasting. Cause it ain't you go home like you come. Don't you go home like you come. Get your hands up all over this house. Get your hands up all over this house. Get your hands up all over this house. I'm telling you the Holy Ghost is falling. The Holy Ghost is falling. The wind, the power, the presence, the Spirit of God. Come on. Come on. Let it blow. Let it blow. Let it blow. Let God touch you. Cause it ain't over.